Howdy folks, welcome to lesson 6 of the CompTIA Network Plus course. Like usual, you should be able to see on the screen what today's video is about. It is about copper cabling types. So yes, we are going to be talking about network cables, but we are specifically going to be talking about the type of network cables that consists of copper. So we're not going to be discussing, for example, fiber optic cables in today's video. That is going to be a different lesson entirely on its own. So with regards to copper cabling types, guys, there's actually many kinds you get. You get Ethernet, you get coaxial, and within these categories, you obviously get, you know, subcategories and all that as well. Now, before we jump into today's lesson, like usual, you know what to do. Give the video a like, help support the channel. It really helps me out when you guys do that. If you'd like to know when Lesson 7 goes live, maybe consider subscribing, the usual mumbo jumbo. I think you guys should know the drill by now. So if you'd like to know when the next lesson goes live, maybe consider subscribing, guys. Otherwise, you might miss it. Alrighty, let's go learn about copper cables. Alrighty, here we are. So first things first, folks, we are going to start things off by talking about Ethernet cables. Now, the funny thing about Ethernet cables, before we jump too deep here, is Ethernet cables is not a specific type of cable per se. A lot of people are actually under the impression that an Ethernet cable is exclusively a LAN cable, the kind that you would plug into your laptop or your desktop. Now, I'm not saying it's not that kind of cable. It is, but it's not limited to that kind of cable. The term Ethernet, guys, is basically an umbrella term. Ethernet consists of many kinds of cables. It consists of your normal LAN cables that you would go and plug into your laptop, desktop, or server. So that will be your Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6a, those kinds of cables. But it's not limited to that. Ethernet cables, believe it or not, also consists of coaxial cables, fiber optic cables. All of those cables I've just mentioned falls under the umbrella, which we call Ethernet cables. Now, today, when I say Ethernet cables, I'm actually just going to be talking about two kinds. And that's going to be, guys, UTP. That's going to be the first one I'm going to be talking about. So UTP is short for unshielded twisted pair. That's probably the most common kind of network cable you can find. There's a bit of a picture for you guys. So if you were to go and cut off the little coating around a UTP cable, like you probably know by now, it's going to expose eight wires. Blue, blue, white, orange, orange, white, brown, brown, white, and green and green, white. So it's four pairs of wires, eight wires on their own, and these wires are obviously what's going to be used for communication to occur between two different devices. Anyway, so that's probably the most common kind of cable you will get, folks. Then you also get a cable called STP, shielded twisted pair. Now, if you're not sure what the heck that is, there's a picture for you guys. At first glance, it might look the same as the previous cable, but if you look very closely, you'll see it's got a little bit of a shield around it. I suppose you could even call that tinfoil. You know, kind of like the kind of tinfoil you'll find in your kitchen for cooking purposes and whatnot. It's a bit of a shield. So... It's for the most part the same, does the same thing. They can even potentially be the same speed. The only real difference between a UTP and an STP is the fact that an STP cable has a bit of a shield around it. Hence the name, shield a twisted pair. Now, why the heck do we have a shield around those four pairs of wires, you ask? Well, guys, that is to help against EMI, electromagnetic interference. Now, as you probably know by now, most of the time, the cable of choice is going to be your normal conventional UTP, but there will be times when you might need to use STP. This could potentially be when your UTP cable has to be parallel near a power cable for too long. That's going to cause EMI because power cables, guys, give off EMI. There's a small little magnetic field around a power cable, and if your network cable is going to be too close for that for too long, it's going to give off EMI, and it's going to cause the data in that cable to become corrupt. It's not what we want. Network cables should also not go near other objects like fluorescent lights. So if you have to put your cables in the ceiling, which is what a lot of people do, try not to put them too close to your fluorescent lights because fluorescent lights, guys, give off EMI. Try not to put these cables too close to heavy machinery that draw a lot of amps because that also gives off EMI. 
Now, unfortunately, we know in life things don't always go according to plan. So sometimes you might need to put that cable near something that gives off a lot of EMI. There's no way around it. And when that happens, guys, there's a quite a few things you can go and look at to help mitigate against that. One of the things we normally tend to use, the first choice, is to go and use STP. Now, normally, STP tends to cost a little bit more than UTP. You know, there has been times I got lucky. I went into the store. I would want to go and buy myself UTP. I saw, I see them giving me a box of STP, and they, they actually charge me the same price. So that's just me getting lucky. That's the salesperson that doesn't know what they're doing. But on average, the STP would normally cost you more money. Now, on its own, it's not just going to go and work. It's not a magic trick, guys. You have actually got to go and ground the little shield. So if you don't ground it, it doesn't really do any good. It's just a normal UTP cable. So it's got a little shield, but you also need to go and ground it properly. If you don't ground it properly, it's not really going to do its thing. So you've got to ground it properly for it to properly mitigate against EMI, of course. Now, I kind of went too far of these two descriptions because I'm supposed to explain this in the rest of the video. But nonetheless, let's go have a look. So starting with, once again, unshielded twisted pair. That's the one without the little shield. First of all, guys, it's a type of copper cabling used in telephone wiring and local area networks. Predominantly these days, you're going to see this being used in your local area networks, not really being used too much in your normal telephone networks. As I've said earlier, this is, in fact, the most common type of network cable that's being used till this day. And there are alternatives to UTP cables. So a couple of alternatives would be, you know, to include things like coaxial cable, fiber optic cable. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to cover fiber optic cable in this video because it's not a copper cable, but it will be discussed very shortly in one of the next few videos. Coaxial cable, yes, we'll cover that today because it's a copper cable. So besides UTP being your unshielded twisted pair, you could potentially go look at coaxial cable. That's a very old kind of cable, I suppose. You can call it legacy. Fiber optic cable is a much newer kind of cable, much faster, but also much more expensive. It does not use copper. Instead, it uses light and glass. Light and glass or laser and glass. Now, what's to be expected here with pretty much any kind of cable, folks, is there are bound to be benefits and there are bound to be drawbacks to all cables. But most enterprises tend to favor UTP cable due to its low cost and it's easy of installation. It's very easy peasy to go and install. It's definitely not going to cost you an arm and a leg, and it's definitely the cable of choice. Should it not work, maybe because there's a high amount of EMI, the next cable of choice will probably be STP. And if you really, really can't use STP, you'll probably end up using something like fiber. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg, but it's completely immune to EMI. All right, and then let's go back to the STP cable, which we mentioned in the beginning of this video. Shielded twisted pair cables, guys. So we already know it's got a little shield around it, you know, so whatever you want to go and call that. A little bit more expensive than UTP, but it's the next choice after UTP. So it adds an outer covering or shield, but functions as a ground or ordinary twisted pair. The shield, in case you guys didn't know, grounds the wires further to reduce crosstalk or electromagnetic and radio frequency interference. Now, up until now, I've said that the shield helps against EMI, which is electromagnetic interference, but I have not mentioned crosstalk yet. Now, if you don't know what crosstalk is, guys, that's when cables influence one another. Even the eight little wires inside your cable, they can also have crosstalk occur, which is why they twist it around one another. So if you go and twist them around one another in pairs, green and green white and then they're going to twist orange and orange white and so on and so forth that somewhat mitigates against crosstalk where the cables go and influence one another because of the small little magnetic field and all that now if you've got network cables near one another as well that can also sometimes to a certain degree have a little bit of crosstalk so if you're concerned about that kinds of nonsense you can also go and use stp which will prevent the actual big network cables themselves from influencing one another not something I see often, but, you know, it has happened. So generally people will go and use STP only because of power cables being nearby, not because of other network cables being nearby. STP cables, guys, are also more expensive, something I did mention earlier, and they're much harder to install. And if you're wondering why are they harder to install, because they look the same, besides the little shield, they look the same, you use the exact same connector for these cables, which is an RJ45, 
you plug them exactly the same, the same thickness, everything about them is the same. So why are they supposedly harder to install? Well, guys, if you want to reap the benefits of STP, you're going to have to go and ground the cable. You're going to have to go and ground that little shield. So you'll find some people even go and, you know, connect it to the frame of the server or something like that. You've got to ground it. If it's not grounded, it's a basically a normal UTP cable. Then you might as well go and buy yourself a cheaper cable. So the main difference between UTP and STP cables is their design, but their purpose, guys, remains the same. And that purpose is to provide you or the user with reliable connectivity and communication. Now, moving on to the next cable in this video, which is actually going to be the last one. There's only going to be three kinds of copper cables we're going to be talking about. That is coaxial cable, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hopefully, I'm not butchering the name. If I am, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said in other videos, I'm not actually English, so sometimes I pronounce things incorrectly. I apologize. But at the end of the day, the message still gets across, and I think that's all that matters. So these coaxial cables, assuming I'm pronouncing it correctly, are predominantly used by TVs or TV companies, guys. It's not the only place you'll find them, and you'll find them behind like a decoder or anything like that. And these used to be used as network cables back in the day. Many moons ago, 15, 20, 25 years ago, if you were to go and check those old switches, if you guys know what a switch is, you would find the backbone on those switches would often be a coaxial cable. I kid you not. So you would find it's like two or four little round circle connectors there. And that was actually, in fact, for coaxial cables, which would have formed the backbone between your switches and all that. Nowadays, the backbone is just a normal network cable, or if it's really needed for speed, they would go and use a fiber optic cable. You'll find some of the newer, fancier switches will have two or four square little ports, which is normally actually for fiber optic cable. Once again, the topic is not fiber optic cable though, so getting back to coaxial cables, these guys are specifically built with a metal shield and other components engineered to block signal interference. It's designed for that. So if you look at the pictures that I've got there, I've got quite a few pictures there for you guys. It's got a solid core normally. Um, in the old days, this used to be copper, and it's got a little plastic around that core. There's a bit of a shield around that, and then there's copper braiding. I think the one, the cable there on the left, guys, is probably the best example. Solid copper core, there's plastic around it. You can't see it in the picture. Then there's tinfoil or a shield around that. And then there's copper braiding, and then there's obviously the coating around the braiding. Nowadays, it's actually more common to find a steel core instead of a copper core, because copper is very expensive, and you'll find that even the braiding is steel, not copper. If you get, if you manage to get yourself a fancy cable, you might get really lucky, and it might be a steel core of copper plating around it, not a solid core. So it's not a solid copper core, it's just a steel core of copper plating around it, and then, you know, the braiding could be other or the braiding will probably be steel more than likely. So yeah, that's how it is these days. These cables could just plug in behind your TV, you know, old bunny ears and all that. You know, maybe there's an antenna on your roof. We've got bunny ears on the TV. So many moons ago, that's what they were used for. But they're also used by decoders and things like that, which you'll plug into. So sometimes they just plug in. Other times they have to go and screw in. Depends on what we're going to be using it for. And believe it or not, it actually also depends on the country you're in. These connectors, guys, vary from country to country. It's not exactly the same. So the actual cables are the same, same concept, but the connectors are not exactly the same for all countries. They do ever so slightly vary. You'll find that maybe two or three countries have got more or less the same connector, and then the next two or three countries have got the same connector. They will not entirely overlap with one another, these countries. Right, folks, I hope you've learned something today. So hopefully you've learned a little bit more about copper cables. And then later in another video, we will talk about fiber optic cables, which I said earlier are made of glass and they use light or lasers to transmit information. Pretty cool, wouldn't you say? And that's just cables. We haven't even talked about wireless yet. So there's a lot to be talked about. And with regard to these cables, we still need to talk about their maximum distances. We still need to talk about their standards. We still need to talk about their connectors, all of which is actually asked in the exam, by the way. Everything I've just mentioned is in fact in the exam. So you'd be wise to familiarize yourself with all of those. You'll find that normally in most manuals, if you're able to get your hands on a good manual, we'll normally have some sort of table in the manual which shows you the different cable types, their standards, their maximum speeds, the connectors they use, 
all of that mumbo jumbo. And the same can be said about wireless. There's normally a table that'll show you the frequencies, the speeds, the maximum distances, the uses and all that. That is also in the exam normally. So if you see a table, 10 to one, it's going to be in the exam, folks. All right, guys, like I said earlier, I hope you've learned something. If you have, please give the video a like, help the channel out. I would really appreciate it if you do so. And um, if you'd like to know when the next lesson goes live, it might be fiber optic, it might not. I'll have to go and check what's next. Then maybe consider subscribing, otherwise you're going to miss it. And then guys, just a thank you and a shout out to those of you clicking on the thanks button, those of you doing donations, you know, of coffee and milkshake. That's all in the video description down below, guys. And then obviously the Patreon sponsors, there they are. Thank you very much, guys. There's the PayPal sponsors. Thank you very much, guys. And then obviously if you don't know yet, there is a Discord server, guys. So if you want to join my Discord server, that's literally the very last link in the video description, way at the bottom. So feel free to go check that out as well. All right, folks, I shall see you in lesson seven of the CompTIA Network Plus course.